Good day and thank you for joining us. Um, in today's lesson, we'll be doing straight line geometry continued. As you can remember last week, we did straight line geometry, a little bit of introduction. So this week, I'll just be carrying on with just a few more points and also onto more complicated examples that you could come across or more you will come across in your exams. So first thing I want to introduce is a concept that I didn't really get to last week. It's angles around a point. Okay. So if we look at our straight line, we know that this angle on our straight line is equal to 180 degrees, right? But what about angles around a point? Okay. So say this is the point over here. And let's say this point there has multiple lines coming out of it. Okay. So we have lines like this, like that. Oops, sorry. And another one like this, okay? So let's say we have one, this isn't quite a straight line, right? So let's say if we were given two angles, right? Say this is the 170 degrees. <clears throat> and this one over here is 60 degrees. And they told us find this last angle over here. Now remember, this is the point here in the middle, right? So these are all angles around the point. One thing you need to know, though, is that if I'm going to put these three angles together, that angle, this angle, and this whole angle over here. If I put these all together, you can see that it makes a circle, right? And what do we know about a circle? A circle's angle is 360 degrees. You can tell here, I got half a circle on my straight line. I got half a circle on my straight line, which gave me 180 degrees. So if I add another half a circle, it gives me a whole circle, right? Which would give me 360 degrees. So looking at this over here, if I wanted to work it out, I'd get 60 degrees plus 170 degrees plus X is going to be equal to 360 degrees. And the reason for this would be angles around a point. Or you could say the reason is also it's a revolution. A revolution is another way of saying that it's a circle, so it's equal to 360 degrees. Cool. And then you'd work out X from there. So that is the new concept that I want to introduce. So if we're going to look at an example dealing with this, we have 150 degrees, 100 degrees, and they want us to find the value of X. Okay. Now remember, we have our point in the middle. These are all angles around a point. So what we can do is we can say, 150 degrees plus 100 degrees plus x is equal to 360 degrees. So if we're going to try and work this out now, we'll keep x on this side and we'll take our numbers or our degrees to the other side, right? Because we want to keep our like terms together. So we'll have x is equal to 360 degrees. Now remember, we're taking these over so they will become negative. So it's minus 100 degrees minus 150 degrees. So essentially we're left with 360 degrees minus 250 degrees in total, right? <clears throat> if we do that, we get the answer of 110 degrees. So therefore we found the value of X now, but now remember, after you've made your statement, next to your statement, you need to have your reason, right? So if I, just for the sake of space, I'm gonna write it here. So I'm writing out my statement, right, that I had 110, um, 150 degrees plus 100 degrees plus X is equal to 360 degrees. So this should have written now in this first line over here, right? So you have that, you write in your reason, either in brackets or you can separate it with this forward slash over here. And so it would be our new reason, angles around a point. Or a revolution. Cool. So either the reason angles around the point or the reason a re revolution. Cool. So now that I have that concept out of the way, we can move on to some complicated examples. So looking at this example over here, we can see that this is very similar to what we did last week. So straight away, we're just going to try and identify how we can get the X over here, right? So <clears throat> Let's try and find the shape. So if you can see, we have the parallel lines over here. So if I'm gonna follow these parallel lines, I can see that this is going to make a Z. Now remember, this is a very crooked Z, but 
you can tell that it is still a Z because it has that that <clears throat> shape that we're familiar with. It's just basically doing it like this, except this line is more flatter. Cool. So you can see the Z, and we remember that the rule that applied to the Z was alternate, right? And it relies on parallel lines. So that means that these two angles are alternate. So we can say in our statement, x is equal to 110 degrees. And the reason is alternate angles. Now remember, if the rule relies on parallel lines, you need to tell them which lines are parallel. So in brackets next to it, I'm just going to write it underneath, you'd say AB, which is line AB, is parallel to line CD. And that would be that answer. So if we move over to this side, we can see that there's something a bit different, right? We have a variable to work out in each angle, which might confuse you, but let's see what happens if we try and apply the same rule, okay? So we're going to try and identify the shape. We can see it's the same shape, so we know that it's going to be a Z. So therefore, we know it's just going to be alternate, right? And what do we know about alternate angles? That these two angles are supposed to be equal. So the way we'll write this out now is x plus 55 degrees is equal to 2x. So you need to write it how you say it. You know that these are alternate, so you know that this angle is equal to this angle. So I'm going to write that this angle, so I've written it out over there, is equal to this angle. So I've written it out of here. So write it as you say it, that is going to help you so much, okay? And then of course, alternate angles. Cool. Now remember, now in this case, in cases where they don't give you the names of the line, you can't really write which lines are parallel, okay? So you don't, in that case, you don't need to write A, B is parallel to C, D because they, they haven't given you names for lines. Okay, but I'm just going to put in names, so we'll just call this AB and CD again. So we'll say AB is parallel to CD. Cool. So once we've gotten to this point, we need to solve for X. Okay. So we'll solve for X as we do normally. So we're going to try and get X's by, its, by with X's and variables, I mean, and constants by themselves. So we'll keep 55 on the right because the bigger x is on the right hand side, so we'll have 55 degrees is equal to 2x minus x, because remember this x comes over, it becomes negative, so we'll be left with then, therefore, x is equal to 55 degrees. Cool. So that is that example done there. So, moving on to this example now. We'll try once again. We're trying to find x over there, so we try and identify a shape. So, I don't know if you can see, but I see that there's an f over here. And what do we know about the f? Those are corresponding angles. So if we're going to try and write out a statement for this, we, have to, we know that corresponding angles are equal to each other, okay? So therefore we know, so these are the corresponding angles. You can see that underneath the, the parallel lines. So we'll say x is equal to 60 degrees. And our reason is corresponding angles. And remember, this rule also relies on parallel lines. So we will say that AB is parallel to CD. And just like that, we have our answer for this example. Moving over to the right hand side, now you can see once again, we have two angles that have variables inside of them. So how do we go about solving that? We follow our normal method, okay? So we identify the shape. It's the exact same shape, so we can see that this is also an F. And it is parallel lines as well, so we know that this angle is going to be equal to this angle. So we're going to write it how we say it. So we know that this angle, so we'll write that angle down, x plus 20 degrees 
is equal to, so we write the equal to in, this angle over here. So now we can write in 3x minus 10. Writing it how we say it, okay? So I'm going to write the reason underneath because I can't really fit it. Okay, I'll just try and fit it in. Corresponding angles, cool. Realize in parallel lines. AB is parallel to CD. Cool. So now we have our statement and our reason written out. So now we can go about solving for x how we usually would. So I can see the bigger x on the right hand side, so I'll bring the x's to the right and the numbers to the left. So I'll have 20 degrees. That negative 10 becomes positive 10 degrees is equal to 3x minus x because that x comes over and becomes negative. Then I'll be left with here 30 degrees is equal to 2x. So what I need to do is get x by itself. So I divide both sides by 2. The 2 scans each other out. So it's 30 divided by 2. Therefore, x is going to be equal to 15 degrees. So we have our answer now for that one over there. So as you can see, it's not that hard once you understand the rule. Okay, once you understand the rule, you can just apply the rule as you usually would. And you'd write down the statement as you are saying it. Because we said this angle, write it down, is equal to, write down equal to, this angle. So I'll write that angle down. And we write our reason afterwards. Moving on to our final example. We're going to try and identify what type of shape we are dealing with over here. Okay. So we can see that both of these angles are on the inside. They're in between two parallel lines. Okay. Let me just not go over my angle size. So both these angles are on the inside of the parallel lines. So let's draw around these parallel lines. So we have there. We have there. You can see that if we join it, we have a U. It's upside down U, but it is still a U, right? And what do we know about the U? We know that those are co-interior angles, right? And what do we know about co-interior angles? They're equal to 180 degrees if you add them together. So what we're going to do is we're going to write out our statement, okay? So we know that this angle, so we write down this angle x plus 43 degrees plus this angle so plus this angle over here x plus 17 degrees is equal to 180 degrees we'll just put this in brackets okay because it's coming after a sign which wasn't initially in operation so that will come down in brackets so we have x plus 43 degrees plus x plus 17 degrees is going to equal 180 degrees. So all we've done is we've written out what the rule actually says about these angles, okay? So then we give our reason, co-interior angles. And we know that this rule depends on parallel lines. So we'll say that KL is parallel to MN. Now we can go about solving for x as we usually would. So these brackets are going to fall away because there's no that there's no negative in front of the in front of the brackets, so none of the signs will change. So now we can just do x plus x, which is giving me two x. We know forty three plus seventeen is going to give me sixty. So we'll just take that sixty over, right? So it'll be one hundred and eighty degrees minus sixty degrees, and so we'll get two x is equal to one hundred and twenty degrees. So Divide by 2 to get x by itself. 2's have cancelled each other out there. 120 divided by 2 is going to give me 60 degrees. So, very important thing to note about today's lesson. Don't stress out if you see two variable angles, okay? Two angles with variables in them. All you need to do is follow your rules and you'll get to a situation where you will be able to solve for x. It might take you a bit longer than it does than you usually would, but you are going to get to your answer, okay? So just remember to apply your rule and write it as you say it, okay? 
Thank you very much for joining us. That is the end of the recording for today.